Hello, comrades, and welcome to another edition of AGR's How You Say Pop Culture Reviews. I'm your host for this episode, Artyon. Wait a minute, just a second. Artyom, as in from the game Artyom? What exactly are you doing on my channel? Easy, comrade, you're doing the review of Metro Exodus, the pride of Mother Russia. Naturally, it's going to be Russian involved in doing the review. Whoa, 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 let me stop you there. I'm not colluding with Russians, all right? Oof, collusion, this is a made-up word. Consider it an uh, international partnership. Look, I don't want to stereotype, but you guys have been accused of a lot of crazy stuff, not the least of which is conspiracy. What conspiracy, comrade? And uh, what is this stereotype you speak? I thought this was professional channel, not radio, on the worldwide spider webs, on the YouTube. Besides, big orange fat man say all the time, it's all fake news. Yeah, right. Come, don't be baby. We drink vodka, we do review, yes? Fine, but this is my review. What's up everybody and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. When the original Metro 33 released back in 2010, it was kind of a sleeper hit. You know say it's sleeper hit, it was hit! Yes, I fell in love with the game. I really liked it, especially in an industry that was awash with first person shooters, it was very unique. Okay, can I get on with this? Yes, apologies comrade. Then later in August of 2014, they kind of did a redux, remaster so to speak, of Metro Last Light and Metro 2033, including all of the downloadable content. It was a lot of value there and it was an awesome package overall. So it's been approximately 5 years since the last real iteration of Metro. So does it live up to all the hype? Well, that's what we're here to find out. This is my official review of Metro Exodus. Let's take a closer look. Now first let me say that this version of Metro is not just rehashing some of the things that it's done before, and that's a really good thing. They have done a wonderful job of expanding this universe and making it much more interesting, building on what was already a very solid foundation. Now the graphics in this game are absolutely stunning, and I'm a little bit jealous of those who get to play this on PC. Yes comrade, tell them about graphics, it's very impressive. Yes, I'm getting to that. Can I please get through this review? Yes, yes, my apologies one more time, comrade. Everything looks just so beautiful in this game, and I have to admit, I didn't see any performance problems or sputtering or anything like that. And trust me, there's a lot of things going on. The weather effects here are fantastic, and the decay of the metro looks even more incredible if that was possible. They put so much detail into this world that I have to say it's pretty impressive, and it really makes you feel like you're immersed in this world. It's a really great job on their part. Now, of course, I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but when I say that they've expanded this universe, I'm not just talking about graphics, game design, and overall gameplay. There are a lot of twists and turns in this story, and you never really know what's going on, which was awesome. Now, overall, the voice acting is done very well here. At first, I thought that they were just kind of mislip reading and it wasn't syncing up very well, but really, it was just people were talking over each other when they were having conversations. It was actually very organic and more real to how people argue and talk when they're in a group. So I thought that little small detail was pretty interesting as well. Of course, some of the performances are not that great and seem a little bit off, but overall, they did a really good job and I was pretty comfortable with it. You have no idea what you just stuck your heads in. With no moves left. Hans, I can't take this line down. Look, Show us your luck. No, I won't be quiet. What is this jammer for? Why are they hiding the fact that Moscow didn't survive alone? There, Look, in the ravine, jammer. there are people from other cities dead. All yeah, of them. Women, up. children. I'll tell you all later. Gramps, what's going on out there? Down this road. The road is fine. Just like the previous Metro games, you do have a lot of freedom in which you want to tackle certain tasks or take down certain enemies. I mean, you can go Rambo style, although you do do it to a detriment because it does eat up your ammo and resources, or if you want to be smart about it and be tactical, you can take things out, you know, Navy SEAL style, and do it very stealth a la Solid Snake. Either way, they're very satisfying and the gameplay is really cool because you can choose how you want to play the game. Thankfully, the interface here is wonderful, and things like reading your map are so simple and streamlined, which is something that I really appreciate. And you can also reverse the map in order for you to see what your objective is, which I thought was pretty cool. It's intuitive, and it's really neat the way that they did it. You see, comrade, and who says that Russian engineering isn't the best in the world? Yes, RTM, I have to admit you guys did a really great job here. I also like the fact that you can interface with your arm, 
Very similar to a Pip-Boy where you have a compass and you also have a Geiger counter, which is really cool. Now, just like with the previous games, being able to craft and make things on the fly is essential for survival in the Metro or in the expanded universe, so to speak. And it was really cool. Again, this interface is so simple and so intuitive. I love what they did here. It's very simple. Things like changing out your muzzle, the stock, the sights, and even crafting other weapons is really cool, guys. And I have to admit, it always felt like a save room every time I found one of these crafting benches throughout the world. Now, I have to admit there are several weapons that you can choose from in order to upgrade, but I did have my favorite. Yes, of course, comrade. The Kalashnikov is the best in the world. He's a great man for Mother Russia. Yes, RTM, my personal favorite was the AK-47. And you can change out the sights, you can change out the stock, the barrel, and most importantly, the amount of ammo that you can use, which, of course, is at a premium in the Metro. But never fear, hunting and gathering is a very big part of the previous games, and it does make a return here. If you need to, you can find items throughout the world in order for you to craft more bullets, Molotov cocktails, and most importantly, more filters for your mask. Because even though this universe has been expanded, there are still parts of the metro and the rest of the wilderness that you'll encounter that has irradiated areas and are toxic to you. So the gas mask is still a very essential part in this world. Now one of the things you're going to notice immediately from Metro Exodus that wasn't really prevalent in the previous games is the overall level design and the color palette. Now the previous games you stayed mostly in the Metro or in dark, very dingy corridors with bland colors. But just like everything else in this game, the color palette has been expanded and it's a real breath of fresh air, quite literally, because you spend a lot more time on the surface than you do down in the Metro. I also really love the fact that you see a lot more creativeness in terms of the overall enemies. And I have to say, these NPCs are pretty smart. They're not just static bullet sponges. I mean, they will use coordinated attacks to try to take you down. So you do have to be very careful. I like the great variety of enemies. They've also adapted to their environments, which I thought was pretty awesome. And I have to admit, surprised me at every corner. Some of them really camouflage themselves against some of the backdrop of the environment that they were in and I didn't even see them standing two feet away from me and it was always exhilarating when they popped out at you. But don't get me wrong, even though you spend a lot of time on the surface, you still have to go into some of the metros and those deep dark chambers. And I have to say, they are spooky as hell, and there are a lot of surprises. A lot of times, there are some jump scares there that made me drop my controller, and it was totally freaking awesome, guys. I still love that it retains that wonderful element that is metro. Just like those deep dark caverns underground, the surface also has his share of jump scares. And these are pretty magnificent and they really happen at random. You do have to be careful, some of these enemies are gargantuan in scale and will really scare the piss out of you guys. I have to admit, this one really got me. That is very small fish. How you say Mino? I used to catch much greater size with my grandfather near Vilnius. That is baby. huge now one of the things that probably made me a little bit apprehensive about this title because you do spend a lot more time on the surface is whether or not it would lose its identity but it totally doesn't and it maintains that sense of tension and dread as you have to go down into these deep down caverns especially when you're using something like night vision you know that you have limited resources and anything can pop out at you from any corner so you do approach things very cautiously. I just love how spooky everything is, especially with the bioluminescent plants, which you can convert into resources, but there is a drawback. Every time you harvest a plant, you do lose its natural light, and it does attract very nasty critters. Will you look at that, comrade? My mother Russia is beautiful country, even though the trees are burned down, but what can you do? 
Yes, RTM, I do have to admit, the level design and the variety of the biomes that you are in are very impressive, and I think long overdue in a natural expansion for Metro, I really love the fact that you have such variety in terms of the things that you're going to be combating in. Now, Metro Exodus, thank God, is not necessarily an open world. It's more like a giant sandbox, and I think that open world works for some franchises and maybe would be a detriment to others. I just like the fact that you can roam around and the fact that things are not so linear. There are several branching paths that you can go in terms of how you want to take out objectives or get to certain points. Now, sometimes it could just be an illusion. Ultimately, they get to the same path, but nevertheless, I did appreciate it. So what is final verdict? Is Metro good game or do we send off to Gulag? <laughs> well, nobody needs to get sent to the Gulag's RTM. Metro Exodus is a really good game and a textbook example of how you expand the universe of your franchise. This is how it's done, while retaining some of the elements that made it fantastic in the first place and just building on that, which was really great in this game. I loved every minute of it. This is definitely something that I recommend to put in your library. You see, comrade, collaboration is good, yes? Yeah, it's not so bad. It was real pleasure being on ATR's Pop Culture Reviews. We drink vodka now, yes? Sure, why not? Tostidania, comrade. <coughs> Cheers, comrade. Okay, before I go, I just want to thank the folks over at FMB Collectibles Incorporated for sponsoring today's review. Alright, everybody, so that's my official review on Metro Exodus. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. The only thing I can hear is that a go-go counter ticking. Oh, it's a go-go Because it's dead. We took our time. Time to replace our filters. Come on, replace your filter. Haven't you spent enough time in the sick bay? <laughs> 